This is CBS 2 News at 5. For decades, his job to size up dead birds like these. Now CBS News Venture Soli reports all those numbers from a Chicago scientist add up to a big discovery. Oh, stench is awful. They all do seem to be on the road and on the sides of the road and on the verges, which is very strange. Many of you will have seen on social media uh, a video going around of an incident in Anglesey where uh, numerous starling have been killed, and I mean many starlings. Uh, we don't know how it's happened, but I'll show you the scene. Um, so we're just outside Bodetan here by Yashin Shwenam Lake, and as you can see on the road here, there's approximately 225 dead starling on the road itself and many others along the hedge uh, on either side of the road. Uh, no stalling apparent, no stalling apparent in the fields on either side, which is very strange. Um, so we've got officers now from the Animal, Animal and Plants Health Agency here who are going to seize some of these uh, starlings uh, with a view to having them examined for uh, looking for poison, for example, or looking for any other thing that might have killed these animals. Um, so uh, it's happened yesterday evening uh, at about 20 to 4 p.m. Um, so if you have any information, if you might have seen anything happen, happening here, because it's very strange, uh, please let us know. John Siwale has been a fisherman nearly all his life. So has his father and grandfather too. It's how the bills get paid. But he says something's not been right for a long time on Lake Victoria. The water is warmer than years before. This is the first fish he's caught in hours. I am worried. Every time I come to fish, I catch very little. It's sad. Sometimes I don't get enough to properly take care of my family. Scientists warn life in Africa's largest freshwater lake could die if the warning signs continue to be ignored. Fishing is one of Uganda's leading export earners. If the fish in Lake Victoria continue to disappear, it's not only the economy that will be devastated, but entire communities for generations to come. Now, ocean deoxygenation. Probably haven't heard of that, but it's a very big problem. Oceans losing oxygen. New report from the International Union of Conservation of Nature warns the world's oceans are struggling to breathe. It is the largest report of its kind. Scientists are calling this the ultimate wake-up call to humanity. Why? Well, the ocean represents 97% of the physical habitable space on the planet, it is central to sustaining all life on Earth. The report found that the loss of oxygen from the world's ocean is increasingly threatening fish species such as tuna, marlin and sharks. This is a, 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 a different sort of effect which we might not have considered before. Correct. So it's a different type of crisis. Uh, it's the crisis of the ocean. And it talks about different zones. Now, is that in different parts of the mm -hmm. world? Is that at different levels of the sea? Tell us how it actually then affects the marine life in turn. Okay, so what we're seeing, or what we've seen, is actually a decline in 2% of the global oxygen level. They have been reduced by 2%. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but just these two small changes will have enormous implications. So those oxygen rich and, and which are favorable conditions to some species will shrink. These are shrinking, these habitats. But also we are altering the energy and biochemical cycles within the ocean. So this is all those different parts of the puzzles are coming together. 
um, we're, we're, we're already seeing the changes and they're drastically all the alterations that we've done to the oceans. Really interesting talking to you about this. Mina Epps from the International Union for Conservation of Nature, thank you. A mysterious light hovering over the valley, giving a few folks in Mesa quite the thrill. But uh, explaining what you're seeing on your screen, that is a little bit more difficult. ABC 15's Cameron Polum is on the hunt for answers tonight. It was about straight up over here and it right. went straight that way. Stop. From outside their Mesa home, DJ Mayer and Carrie Burnett shot this video Sunday around 9 p.m. And it started kind of moving diagonal across. Um, trying to figure out which way it was heading uh, and as it did that's when we noticed it started dropping things from it. The object captured on two cell phones looks like a bright orb hovering silently in the sky every few moments dropping what looks to be flares towards the ground. And it wasn't just us, our neighbors next door, they were out they weren't even filming, they were more in amazement, like statues just sitting there watching it. DJ immediately posted the video to Facebook and the comments rolled in, but none had an explanation for what they were seeing. Finally, the aliens are here. Wow, that's crazy. The entire event harkens back to 1997 and the mysterious Phoenix Lights, one that remains in hot debate even today. We reached out to several aviation experts who theorized the light seen Sunday could be from parachute flares used by the military or even helicopters or other aircraft dropping flares during training. In fact, the outlaw military operations area sits not far from where the video was shot, but video found online for those types of exercises just doesn't seem to match. Oh, no navigation lights. Even the military has to have navigation lights on. That's an FAA rule. We reached out to the FAA, Luke Air Force Base, and the Army National Guard, but none could say for certain what it was. And tonight, our guess is as good as yours. I know what I saw, and I don't think that it was from here, and I think it was definitely something else. U.S. Geological Survey out with some new data that puts areas of the East Bay and San Jose at a higher risk for earthquake damage. The Hayward Fault, one of the most urbanized and dangerous faults in the United States. It's no secret that the Bay Area is due for a major earthquake. The USGS just released this map today, and as you can see, there is a 75% or higher chance of a slight or greater damaging quake hitting our area in the next 100 years. The excitement of the beginning of the summer holidays brought to an abrupt end. Thick plumes of smoke and ash rising thousands of meters into the air as the White Island volcano, 50 kilometers off the coast of New Zealand, erupts. Uh, New Zealand geoscience uh, expert Nico Fournier. This is one of the most seismically active regions of the world. How did we not know that this was going to happen? It's simply the nature of the beasts, so some volcanoes are easier to forecast than others. American Michael Shade captured it all on his phone. He and his family had just finished their tour. It went from nothing going on to it erupting. We look back and we just saw this plume of smoke coming up from the volcano. On shore, a helicopter grounded, covered in ash, and tourists stranded. We're now 2,200 feet above the volcano. It looks pretty peaceful now, but that plume you can see 
indicates that this is still a very seismically active volcano. In the scheme of things, for volcanic eruptions, it's not large, but if you are close to that, it is, it is not good. It's known as New Zealand's angriest volcano. Thousands visit every year, but this eruption was totally unexpected. Some people were just feet from the crater when it exploded. For over 40 years in a field museum lab, David Willard's measured birds, dead birds. Over 70,000 at last count. Everything in this drawer has hit a building in Chicago. Killed by concussions, most are collected by volunteers and make their way into Willard's lab. We've been measuring the wing length, measuring the bill length, and then the leg length, and the weight. For each bird, he's painstakingly jotted down the information by hand in journal after journal. Still, Willard wasn't sure what to do with all that information. I feel like I'm a way better data generator than I am a data analyzer. But researchers at the University of Michigan flocked to his data, finding that over the years the birds were actually shrinking in size. Are we talking about massive changes? No, we're talking in some cases you know, tenths of millimeters, but uh, across a big enough sample that, that it actually is meaningful. Overall, their length and mass has dropped about two and a half percent in that time. May I take the measure? Yeah. What would I have to look for? I'd have to get it you under the wing? Brace it. I'm not very good at it. Researchers conclude it's nature adapting to climate change. As the breeding grounds of these birds are getting warmer, it may be advantageous to be to be smaller. Willard's records also found wing length increased by 1%, which could indicate birds are flying farther to find suitable places to breed. The more examples of what it's actually doing to wild populations of things, the more we'll be able to put it all together and have a better sense of what the future is going to look like. One of the next steps in this research is to examine the skeletons of these animals to see what that can tell us about the changes in bird populations and the world around us. At the Field Museum, Vince Girasoli, CBS2 News. Fascinating.